Okay, everybody, welcome to the final game from Canton 2022. Now, this is round 14, and I'm playing um, one of my most played opponents of all time, Dean Hergott. So in front of you, I have a little um, a little table here from crosstables.com. And this is showing a progression of um, my games against Dean. So the first game I played against him was January of 2013. Uh, almost 10 years ago now, uh, in the Montreal versus Ottawa. Um, Ottawa, I guess, we could do a yearly a yearly club um, club tournament where we play against each other's club. Ottawa usually wins. Ottawa has a very strong uh, Scrabble, Scrabble scene. Um, home to Adam Logan, past uh, world and national, uh, national champion. Uh, Matthew Tunnicliffe, past national champion. And Dean is uh, is right up there. He's a very, very strong player. He also uh, used to play professionally uh, in chess. He was uh, an international master and uh, would have probably gotten the grandmaster title had he not suffered from uh, health issues uh, during his, his conquest. Um, so yeah, Dean, a very, uh, very talented um, mind sportsman, I guess. And um, yeah, the first time I met him was when I was rated 11.59. And I lost the game by 40. And the second time, uh, I actually avenged that, uh, beating him 431 to 387. The same year, uh, seven months later, as you can see, this is when I was like completely shooting up in the ranks. Um, I had gained um, over 500 points within seven months of rating, which is very, uh, I guess, uh, very, very rare to see. But um, yeah. Um, after that, I had a seven-game winning streak um, in 2015, and then I lost my next four, winning only one game in the Canadian Championship, then losing another five, so very, very streaky um, in the 2015-17 era. And then, yeah, I was down by a lot. Um, he was beating me more than I was beating him, but then slowly but surely I was trying to come back. Uh, I had three wins in a row. Um and at the uh, at the very end, um, before the Canton tournament in 2020, we were tied at uh, I think it was um, 18 wins apiece or 19 wins apiece. It was 19 wins apiece, and I broke the tie in in Canton uh, round eight, which I've already mentioned, um, which I've already sorry I've already recorded a video of. Um, so now the score is 20 for me, 19 for Dean. And it's up to him to to try and uh, equalize. So uh, extremely, yeah, extremely nice rivalry going on here. Despite me consistently starting in 2015 being higher rated by up to 200, 300 points on Dean, um, he he kept on managing to uh, to outplay me. Um, and yeah, there's a few games I still need to upload. Wow, there's a lot of games versus Dean that I need to upload. Hope I find those games eventually. Anyways, all right, intro over. Um, let's get to the actual game. Um, so I opened with Wedgie. Uh, as you can see, Wedgie, uh, despite Y being a nice defensive play, not throwing any uh, one-point vowels out into space and scoring 24 points, it keeps the G and only scores 24, Wedgie scores 34. So I played Wedgie vertically, of course. Um, Dean plays Hop. Uh, his leave here was A-U-L-S. I have his racks. Uh, he was very nice to give them to me. Uh, so it looks like playing something like WAP is probably better to get rid of the uh, get rid of the U. But Hop is a good play. It sets up the S for Shop. Uh, it's, uh, it accomplishes something, whereas WAP just accomplishes getting rid of some letters. Um, so yeah, Hop comes down, and uh, I strike with a bingo. Let's see if you can find uh, a bingo with this rack. I'll, uh, I'll let you guys pause the video, or uh, maybe you've already seen one. But um, I go ahead and play... Oh, Tundish here. Sorry, I'm uh, emoting because uh, I had an amazing <laughs> nine-letter word available here. Super thin. That's obviously a huge miss. Um, 
Did not know that was a word. That's really cool. I e super thin. I don't know if I even looked for nines, but I definitely would not have played that if I had seen it. Um, but yeah, I played Tundish. Um, I also saw Runtish. I didn't see Humans, I don't think. Uh, but I saw Runtish and Tundish. And I had to convince myself Tundish was a word. Humans is probably better. Um, and there's another nine of Unhippist. Wow, that's so cool. Uh, yeah, anyways, uh, I had to convince myself that Tundish was valid because it looks really weird. Uh, but I had just recently finished studying the sevens. And uh, it is indeed a valid word. It just looks very weird. Um, and yeah, the Dean held and, and didn't challenge. Um, because he said, well, he must have had other options. So I guess that must be a word, even though it looks super weird. I think that, that was his uh, paraphrase comments. Um, and he responds with about, which is why I probably shouldn't have put the H here. It just gives a lot of easy scoring uh, with vowels mainly. Um, and with about, he kept LS. So uh, yeah, that's the best play. Nice job. Um, but yeah, luckily I drew extremely well here and was able to score 50 points overlapping the other way which isn't really like the plan was to create two scoring spots with my play but i didn't expect to get the better of them um so that was that was definitely very lucky for me uh to draw into this um and now dean is uh has drawn three a's unfortunately and uh has to just play a a uh, he decides to play for eight I think he played right there yeah he played right here he just wanted to open a bit more space i think um than just playing for 12. and i have this rack and i decided to play ivy there are a couple spots to play ivy um i could also play tivy and i could also play ivy here um obviously i'm trying to prevent dean here from um from, from bingoing, but unfortunately the way he played ah uh, means that there's no real way for me to interfere with everything. So what I decided to do is I really wanted to interfere with the higher scoring spots uh, for bingos. So instead of um, playing Ivy here uh, or, or, or Tivi, Tivi would set up uh, the K column for, for double word score bingos potentially. Uh, and this Ivy this Ivy sets up column K as well. Uh, I decided to just play play here. Um, I think this is where I played it. I don't actually remember. Um, yeah, pretty sure. And um, Dean's next play was uh, Kaw, 29. Very nice dynamic move. Uh, he's down by over 100 and he wants to score a lot for bingos so he's opening up the double double lane on the e column that i definitely need to address um if i can but um instead i drew into a, a bingo of deltoid uh so i was able to play that uh and dean plays midlines i actually don't remember Where's dean Yeah, I think this is, yeah, this is where he played midlines. And now we have this position where there's a triple triple open. I'm up by a bingo. There's a triple triple open and there's a double double open. So we have a very uh very dynamic game. I decided to play fun. Uh there's only one other S unseen to me. So I want to not only block uh pretty much all the triple triples except like Bethesda and Fund. I guess you could play that. Is that available? Uh, he'd need a blank. He'd need a blank to play Bethesda. Um, but other than that, that's probably, that probably blocks all of the, the triple triples, and it sets up my S uh, and keeps very well. So um, that's what I wanted to do. I also saw that I could play... Was there something else that I saw? Maybe not. Okay. I just played fun. Um, 
and Dean draws the blank and the S. So that's exactly what he needed. Uh, he decides to play Kavas. Um, he could also play Kavas. That's a very interesting choice. Um, but yeah, Kavas looks good for 46. And I'm sort of worried here. Like, I could he could just bingo to this S. Um, so I, I could play something like Genesis, but again, now this is the biggest threat in my opinion. This just this double double. Like I just need to get rid of it, and I have a play that does that and keeps again with keeps nose, which is a, a very good bingo leave. Um, so I play G. Um, here he had this rack, and uh, he played of right. Yeah, of uh, is a good play here. Um, and I have no idea what I was thinking here, but I played snorers uh, just to try and outrun everything. Um, yeah, this is a very interesting choice by me. Uh, I remember being like agonizing over this position because I knew that I was just completely destroying my rack by doing this, but I'm just trying to play uh, to maximize the, uh, or minimize the score that any of Dean's bingos would have. The problem with this is that now, once I'm getting rid of my S, um, it's going to be very hard for me to defend against certain setup, setup type plays that Dean can make. Like, if he has the blank, he can set up an S, and he has the only S left because he has the blank. Um, but I, I decided that he seemed to be close enough to a bingo that I really wanted to get rid of this S. And by scoring 24 points, I'm going up 84. So it should be uh, just enough a lot of the time to uh, outscore his bingo. But this is a very dangerous idea um, in, in a different way than removing the danger of this S being there. Uh, so Dean unfortunately draws the Q out of a uh, two-tile draw, um, and he was said he was considering just dropping it for 22 instead, um, and we're going to give that a look because uh, obviously the valuation is a lot lower, uh, the I is definitely not worth 11 points on this leave, however on this board uh, it's pretty good to uh, keep as many lanes open as possible. So we're going to see how, how the, uh, the two plays perform. Um, the, it's still possible, like, even if, uh, the simulation is going to say that QI for 33 is better, it doesn't mean it's necessarily better. I was actually discussing this on stream, um, last night, but, um, the Scrabble engines don't actually understand, um, board dynamics. So what I mean by that is if Dean is able to play for 33 here, well, you see, okay, he has this lane here on the D column, he has this lane here on the uh, 11th row, and he has this lane on the 12th row. So that's a lot of lanes. Um, so it doesn't seem like, for an engine, it doesn't seem like there's any danger of Bingo's not playing. Uh, there's also this, this nine row as well. Um, but what can I do uh, to really, really interfere with all of those things is using the board space to my advantage you see there's intersection of all of these points, and that is at um, 11, the, the 11th row and the 12th row. So the intersection is right over here. Um, so if I'm able to put something here, a tile, uh, right on the uh, D11 square, uh, and then come this way across, I am going to be removing basically all four of the possible lanes uh, at the same time and not giving much back. Um, so I could also also just play at 11E and that would be even safer if I have some sort of play that interferes very well without giving like underlapping possibilities. Um, that can be extremely useful for me uh, long term and short term because I'm, I'm uh, getting rid of all these threats at the same time and the engine doesn't realize that I can do this the engine's just assuming that I'm going to play, like for example, if I play if I have a J, it's gonna assume that I'm gonna play um something with Jivey. Also, I'm not even sure. Yeah. 
it's going to assume I'm going to play something with Jivey, but I might want to not play with Jivey and play something uh, on the 11th row. Um, but the engine has no idea that I, that I would be doing this. It only assumes that plays here happen when they have the highest value. Um, so I would say that playing QI for 33, not only um, is it better than the engine thinks, because um, it's better because he's scoring so much so much more and he's down by 80 and he needs to keep the scoring pressure up but it's also worse because it allows me to make these sorts of plays and i think it's a lot worse than it is better um so it's really possible that, that playing qi for 22 is the play here but um i think in the interest of keeping the scoring pressure on dean needs to just hope that i don't really have a, a super perfect play um but i actually do and this also might be crazy. Like I have Jivey here. Um, I was just mentioning this, but um, yeah, this isn't possible. But like this interferes with everything. Um, I don't even know if I saw Jivey. <laughs> I might've just totally missed it. Um, and this is probably not very sound, um, but yeah, again, if I put this into the simulation, it's going to hate it. It's going to hate it. And it's not going to understand why I'm sacrificing all these points because it's going to think, okay, at some point, play is going to be made with Joe or play is going to be made over here and whatever, the board will be open again. Um, but yeah, what what uh, what engines don't realize is that I'm just trying to... Uh, I'm not trying to maximize my my value for the rest of this game. Now that I'm ahead at this at this rate... I'm just trying to block as much as possible to, uh, to make sure that that Dean doesn't uh, doesn't bingo, and um, so I played Joe for twenty three. Um, who knows if that's right? Um, there's something to be said about the fact that there's still some spots for for Dean to bingo on the board, like maybe from this T, uh, he can bingo still. Uh, maybe with a gape, uh, he can still play a seven letter word, and maybe he can open the board and score points. And then if I try to block again, he can score more points. So it's not it's not very uh, it's not very like perfect this this idea of mine. Um, so yeah, okay. So here is where yeah here is where the play of Joe is going to show its weakness. Um, of course, most of the time I'm actually going to show you this. Um, yeah, I need to show this to you with the uh, with the uh, simulation. Uh, the simulation is going to say, "Look, Joe for thirty-seven. What are you doing, Josh? Um, opponent next turn. It's going to bingo a quarter of the time, uh, probably more than that. Because um, again, another another thing the engine doesn't realize is that uh, human players balance their racks um, a lot more than than random." Um, it's it's starting from a position of randomness here, saying that if Dean has a random rack, he's going to bingo uh, one fifth of the time, but it's probably more like thirty percent, or potentially even more, um, which means that that even like that means that the nine percent might also be higher, uh, but it's it's a huge it's a huge stark difference here between between the plays, and I'm also yeah I'm also stopping him from scoring as well. Um, but yeah, this just goes to show like the the big difference, and that ten percent um, of the time, I'm gonna be in trouble potentially because he's gonna be tying the game up, whereas I could have scored uh, fourteen extra points, and if he he bingos, I'm still gonna be ahead like twenty or something. Um, so yeah, this is this is the uh, the ten percent or whatever or more of the time where indeed Dean does have a bingo of Lambert, and if he spots this word Lambert. Uh, he's going to be ahead by 17 points. Um, it's crazy that it fits. You have to make all these overlaps. Um, but it just goes to show the potential weakness of playing full out uh, defense because the off chance that your opponent does get a bingo down, you're going to be in serious trouble. Um, but luckily, Dean did not know the word Lambert. If he knew it, he would have seen it for sure. Um and instead, he uh, he just dropped his M here for 10 points. And I got extremely lucky with my draw. 
uh, drawing Zah, um, and what else did I draw? Z yeah, I drew Z-A-R. So he gave me a perfect spot to play Zaire. Um, I was going to play it here already for 35, but this is just perfect. And now the game is pretty much over. I'm ahead 117 points. Um, but again, like, I think I might have missed Jivey. I don't really know for sure. I feel like I would have probably just played there uh, because I've been in so many positions where I choose the very defensive route and I get burned for it. Um, but yeah, very interesting, very interesting game. Um, uh, whoops. So what did Dean play? He played Brew, L-E-T-R, blank. Yeah, okay. So yeah, he just played Brew here. Uh, he didn't really know what to do. He was very low on time. Um, he obviously wanted to draw something on the D column. He saw this possibility. But yeah, at this point, he uh, was pretty much throwing in the towel because there's, there's no bingos, and he was, he was really low on time. Um, I decided to play. Ooh, that's cool. I decided to play Pig here. Seems fine. I'm trying to block bingos underneath Joe that could potentially score like 90 points, uh, making J-O and some other overlaps. Um, and... Yeah, Dean actually managed to bingo here. Um, plays Arbalest. Um, I don't know why it has a weird valuation. It should be valued at 61 points. Um, but yeah, he had a couple of better options. Um, but yeah, just doesn't make a big difference. Um, and here in the end game. Um, hopefully I found the best end game here, but maybe I didn't. Let's see. Ah, oh, man. I'm supposed to play Eon first. All right. I made a two point mistake in the end game. Um, because by playing Eon first, I'm preventing, yeah, I'm preventing Dean from playing Khan. Um, I just didn't know that that would work out like i thought if he played colt that was better than than con but then what do i do with this let me look at this line this is weird because he just plays colt ah okay i'm underlapping for 23 i didn't i didn't see that i was setting up another spot okay that makes sense that's why it's two points better um okay so the Eon first. End games are tough. Um, but yeah, obviously nothing really mattered here. Um, spread differential didn't matter. And uh, yeah, it was the last game of the tournament and I won 460 to 373 for some reason. Something was misscored. What was miss scored? Is that year 53, 23, 24, 27, 23, 64, 20, 50, 81, 34. So I must've made some math mistake. That's super weird. 64, 249, 72, 299. Oh my God, look at this. Come on, focus. Snorers. 24 plus 299 is not to 325. Oh, I think that was actually a three. Yeah, that was a three. That was just a really bad squiggly, and I misread it. Okay, damn. Um... Yeah. Damn, 462, 373. Anyways, that settles it, guys. Um, that was the uh, Canton tournament. This was the last game. I finally finished. <laughs> and after this tournament, I was 21 and 19 against Dean. Uh, so that felt good. Um, uh, yeah, kudos to Dean. Played played very well. Um, 
And yeah, I have some more games coming soon, uh, but not from Canton. So stay tuned for those. And uh, thanks for watching. All right. Goodbye.